In the last 15 months, we've played the world number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, and 13. And after beating two of these pairs, coming close to some and getting destroyed by others, we wanted to share three things that we've learned and explain how you can use these to improve your game too. So pretty much every time we've lost to a top 10 pair, we've come off court and felt frustrated at one thing in particular, how many easy mistakes we made or what we call unforced errors. This might seem simple. Yes, of course, the best players in the world are going to make less mistakes than us, ranked 33 in the world, but there's more to it than you might think. Yeah, we've watched all of these matches back that we lost and the pairs in the top 10 made an average of six unforced errors per match compared to our average of 12. That's a huge difference. And it's why we've come off court feeling frustrated as at times it felt like we just gave them points. But why did we make on average double their unforced errors? Could we not just make less mistakes? Well, people who are better than you generally move faster, hit higher quality shots and also anticipate shots better. And these three things put you under pressure, whether that's technically, tactically, physically, or mentally. This then makes you feel like you need to play perfect shots that skim the net or land plumb on the line. This inevitably leads to more mistakes, which makes you feel like you need to play even more perfect to win just one point. So you make more mistakes and you get it. The cycle continues. Yeah, for example, when we played the world number ones, Zheng Si Wei and Huang Yao Chong, we both made a few easy mistakes on our return of serves because we felt like we needed to play a perfect net cord. Otherwise, she was going to kill it. And we know it's not just us that have experienced this. We see it happen at every level of badminton. When we play you guys in our challenge videos, you always say you make mistakes you wouldn't normally make because you feel like you need to play perfect shots. So bearing all of this in mind, what can we all do to reduce our unforced errors? Well, first you need to stop being okay with making easy mistakes and you need to practice this. We'd recommend doing a simple routine that we do regularly. You hit 25 drop shots in a row, but if you make a mistake, you go back to zero and start again. If you're fairly new to this, maybe start on a half court so you're not under much pressure and you don't need to hit perfect drops. It's just about making no mistakes. When you can do this comfortably, you can progress to trying to hit higher quality shots. Lastly, when you almost never have to go back to zero, you can then progress to being under more pressure with varying heights of lifts and moving to both sides, which is similar to a match. You can do this routine with a variety of different shots, such as rear mid, mid court control or defense. The most important thing is to hold yourself and your training partners to high standards. Practices like this can massively improve your consistency so that, like the World Top 10, you don't make many unforced errors. Okay, let's move on to the second thing we've learned from playing every pair in the World Top 10. And let's start by watching this. What you've probably noticed is that they all have amazing defense and that ability to get one extra shot back. We're sure you've probably experienced this too. You've got an easy half court smash or neck kill. You go for the winner and pretty much start to celebrate winning the point, but then your opponent gets it back and you feel like you now need to end the rally even more. This little bit of extra stress then often leads to a mistake. Not quite that celebration you had in mind. Yeah, and this, on top of our first point, that they barely make any unforced errors, really adds the pressure onto these situations where you have an easy chance. So, learning from this, how can we all practice getting that one extra shot back? Well, for us, after almost all of these matches against top 10 pairs, the very next session, we go and practice our defense. And we have one practice for you that will massively help your ability to get that one extra shot back. Lift the shuttle up to your partner but lift it short so they have an easy smash and you have to try and get it back. This practice is replicating the situation where you or your partner have hit a bad lift and you're under a lot of attacking pressure. One key tip here is to remember that your defensive shot doesn't have to be sensational or too tight. Often hitting just slightly away from their racket or direction of movement is enough to relieve some pressure and help you reset the rally. Improving your defensive technique will also help you get more shots back. So we'll link our defensive playlist, which includes lots of tips up here if you want to check it out after this video. Okay, the third thing we learned from playing every pair in the world top 10 is their adaptability. 
let's explain this a bit more and share how you can become more adaptable too. So when we played the world number one, Si Wei and Yo Chong, I hit this deceptive drive, which was a winner. Now, against a lot of other pairs, I could do this a few more times in a match, and they'd also have decent chance of being winners. But playing the best pair in the world, I hit this winning shot once, and they instantly adapted to this, and they were ready for it the second time. So we have some good news for you and some bad news. The good news is that this isn't a superpower, and you can do it too. We'll get on to the bad news in a minute. But first, let's explain two ways you can become more adaptable. Method number one is thinking and assessing in between every point you play. So after each rally, take a moment to think, when I played that net shot return, what did my opponent do? Could I have done something differently? This will take up a lot of mental energy and focus at the beginning. And you might play the same return and lose the point five times before you actually do something different. But over time, it'll hopefully decrease from five times to just one or two. Method number two is learning to adapt by watching others. After speaking to some of the world's best pairs, they're always analyzing their own games, and we often see them watching in the stands too. The best players are students of the game. They're constantly learning. Not only are they learning where they went wrong in a match or their upcoming opponent's style of play, but they're also trying to learn new things from other players. One way to practice this second method is watching games at your local club night, but we'd also recommend watching pro players. Now, if you go onto YouTube and you struggle to find games, or you can't watch live matches because they're geo-blocked, then we'd recommend downloading and using Surfshark VPN, who are kindly sponsoring this video. Yeah, downloading Surfshark and signing up only takes a few minutes, and then you can change your virtual location with just a couple of clicks, and now you can watch any match you like. Using Surfshark, you can watch a pro match and count how many unforced errors they make. Look out for their incredible defense, or see how they adapt to their opponent's shots and tactics. Changing your virtual location isn't just good for watching badminton too. One of our Patreons recently went on a trip to Kenya and needed to download an app which wasn't available in that country. But Surfshark saved the day and he was able to download it. And if you've been watching our videos for a while, you'll know that we use Surfshark VPN all of the time. Whether that's to browse the internet safely on a public Wi-Fi or to make sure we can watch the next episode of the US office when we're abroad. We'd highly recommend Surfshark, plus there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there really is no harm in giving it a go. If you want to try it for yourself, click the link in the description below to get an extra three months for free. So what was that bad news? Well, whilst it's not a superpower, becoming more adaptable isn't an overnight fix. We all want a quick, easy hack, but unfortunately, they rarely exist. Getting better at this will take lots of consistent, purposeful practice. Now, one bonus point that we learned from playing the world top 10 is that they all read the game incredibly well. So if you want to improve your reading of the game, then check out this video here. And we'll also include the doubles defense playlist that we mentioned earlier here. And finally, we want to thank you for your support. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to go to these tournaments and gain the experiences of playing the best players in the world. So thank you so much for watching and we'll hopefully see you on another video very soon. Bye. Bye.